When I was Lord Mayor, we established um, uh, Ballymunna Brighter's Future Report, which uh, uh, former Lord Mayor Andrew Montague uh, uh, drafted. Um, and you were very good to make Super Chief Superintendent Mark Curran available to, to that report. Um, and you probably will have noted in December, the Cabinet appointed John Costello as the new um, chair of the implementation board uh, for Ballymun to try and help uh, operationalise some of those and implement some of the recommendations of that report. I suppose one of the key elements of the report was, um, and you would have to conclude that some of these uh, comments came from within the Gardaí, because they're in the report and they're informed by the, by the report, um, is that the Northern Division um, has 2.3 guards per thousand. Uh, if you take the 48 guards uh, that are assigned to Dublin Airport, and these are all the 2021 yeah. figures, right? Yeah. If you take the 48 guards that are assigned to that, I think the figure dropped to something like 1.7 uh, guards per thousand population. Like, uh, that region has Darndale, Coolock, Ballymun, all very significant yeah. areas. Yeah. How has Sligo, Cavan and Westmead got more guards per thousand population than areas uh, where equally in the report it's referenced, I think it's the third highest division for murder rates and serious crime. Do you, do you see this an inconsistency there in terms of the application of, uh, of it? And maybe in your answer, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the methodology of how do we distribute guards across the country? Because as Catherine Murphy says, the minister tells us it's entirely a matter for you. So give us an insight as to how we distribute guards. Well, well um, we have a, a workforce um, strategy and a workforce then uh, dis distribution um, process. Uh, and that uh, is a process that I'm engaged in. Uh, we meet monthly uh, and review then uh, where vacancies are, where the requirements are, who is actually looking for what, and how we then we balance then uh, the organisation. Um, it, it has been made somewhat simpler in the last few months because we've actually then had um, uh, a student uh, probationary guard is starting now from the college. So that then allows movement and allows movement into the divisions and it also then allows movement then into specialisations. And, and in part then, uh, part of my function is I'm, I'm balancing those resources to make sure that all of our operational units remain uh, viable. And, and and, and part of that is uh, uh, making sure that rural divisions have enough personnel so they can properly patrol, live a sustainability. Uh, and that's not just about the workload, that's about the geographic area that they cover. It is about the community policing service that they provide as well. Uh, I think the new, the new management information that we have now, really over the last sort of four months, uh, is Garda CF now has rolled out nationally, gives us a complete uh, picture of where the demand is at any one time. It highlights then just the the disparities in demand between the various divisions, and they're quite considerable. Uh, some some divisions, in terms of the calls for assistance, would have twice or three times the calls of others. So that gives you an idea of just the disparity, and, and that's just not down to population. I suppose, it, I suppose it, Commissioner, what I'd love to see is a, is, is a methodology. You know, so population is a factor, level of crime is a factor. Um, and that it's not just based on historic numbers in in, in, a, in, a, in a station, that there's that that there's an acceptance that where there's a very like I, again in the in the, in the report it talks about between 2011 and 2020 the number of drugs offences um, doubling over over that period. That means the guards there on the ground have to do double the work, double the processing, but they don't have double the numbers. Well, I would point to the formation of uh, divisional drugs teams and how successful they have. Mm. They've been against uh, street dealers and, and actually me medium-sized dealers who are, you know, locally big, big enough fish. But, but again, Commissioner, but, so the, the, divisional drug, the divisional drugs team will be contained within the overall number of guards in a division. Wouldn't that be true? Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's correct. So, so I, I come back to the point is, how has a division... And by the way, I could make the same case about the, the Blanchetown Fingless area as well, yes, right? Yeah. But how has a division with one of the highest murder rates, one of the highest numbers of uh, of, ser of serious crime, got one of the lowest numbers of guardian per thousand? Well, but, but we, we have responded uh, to the demands in that division with the resources that we have available. 
If there was, if, if, if we could spread more, we would do that. But we have the well, Commissioner, the Minister tells me, have. and look, I'm not advocating for any other part of the country to have less Gardaí, right? And my colleagues, but they have their job to do. Yes. I have my job to do. Yes, yes. My constituency has one of the highest levels of crime, one of the highest numbers of murders, and the fourth lowest numbers of, of Gardaí per thousand. How do I defend that? Well, and the only person in the country that can change that is you. Uh, that's, that's correct. Ultimately, I'm responsible for the division of, of labour in the, in the organisation. But I have to make sure that, uh, as I say, all, the, all of the divisions have sufficient numbers that they're sustainable. And also then, uh, marry the resources that we have. I would point out to the additional resources which are applied to these these really busy areas in terms of uh, national units and indeed in the case of DMR, oh, in the case of all the regions actually, the regional units, and they go to where uh, the work is in terms of crime. So that's people like the Armed Support Unit uh, and DMR in particular, that's also the ERU on look, patrol. Look, look, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Commissioner. And look, maybe I suppose the way to go forward with it, because I'm obviously somebody about wants to work with people to, to improve something. Um, one of the, I think the keys for John Costello's group will be that senior decision makers uh, are committed to that process of, of implementing on the ground. That involves, by the way, the HSE, TUSLA and other state agencies that often leave the Gardaí on the front line on their own without the support that, that they, should, they should be getting. Maybe I could ask you for a commitment that uh, a, a, senior, a senior level of, uh, uh, of engagement will, be, uh, will take place with well, John, yeah, John Costello's no, implementation. Absolutely. And, um, we, we recognise the real hotspots that we have around yeah. just police and demand and what we're going to do about those going forward. We're, in part, we hope that the new community safety structures will form, further formalise this and then we can work collectively with our agencies about trying to reduce demand. But we do recognise uh, just the huge amount of work which is undertaken by members in those divisions. Uh, but um, I also have these nationwide responsibilities and national responsibilities and it's yeah. and it's trying to maintain viability well, and sustainability everywhere. Statistics can say a lot of things but there's very clear evidence there that we don't have the level of guarantee that, that we should. Yeah. Can I